right, it's going to be a pretty quick video today. We're going to be talking about building a very simple trade spreadsheet, like a trade log. Now, this helps with when you're buying things, you can keep track of kind of what your position is if you really want to be like really precise with it. Um, so we're going to be doing things like looking at, you know, taking the current price, a little bit of ESI work in this one, but not too much. We'll walk through all the formulas that are used, but this is going to be using the official E1 line add-in for Excel. It will not work in Google Sheets. So once you have Excel up, make sure you have that add-on installed. Make sure you have at least, you know, one character logged in, even though we really won't be using any character data. We'll be just using the uh, public uh, market data, so to speak. So like I said, this is going to be useful for logging your per unit price, getting an estimate on your total cost and um, current prices as well. And then we can get like an estimated profit. So as you kind of fill this log out, you can come in here, you can refresh, recalculate and be able to see, get a rough idea of what kind of profit you can make by potentially um, liquidating certain things. So with that being said, um, I actually have a field up here in the very top and this is just so we can see i can easily show the uh, formulas being used here so we're gonna go ahead and size these out so our spreadsheet is gonna be using an id field uh, we're gonna be tracking the name the quantity that's the quantity that we would buy the per unit price and the cost the total cost of what we uh, put the buy order in for then we have the current price and then we have estimated profits over here but let's just go ahead and start at the beginning only a few of these fields will actually need to be filled out. We're going to pull the ID from the uh, item name. So how this is working, when you download this sheet to look at it, um, you'll notice that if you roll over this field, you'll see the exact same formula that's in the very top here, but with an equal sign in front. That's how we denote a function. In order for this uh, function to show up as text, I had to remove the uh, equal sign. But this is really just up here so that you can better see what's going on. So the function that's using for the ID is going to be eveonline.inventory search, open parentheses. Then the B3 we're going to be referencing is the name field for that row. And then we're going to do comma true because we want it to be a strict search and then comma again for false because we don't want to uh, show unpublished stuff. We're going to close that parentheses and then we're going to be dot ID and that will return the ID for that. Now, like I said, this field does not need to be inputted by you. This will be just completely automatically done when you do the name. The next column is pretty simple. This is just going to be a name, and we will just put the exact item name in here. So right now we have Tritanium in there. Um, so if we put actually anything in there, as long as it's the correct spelling, it'll pull the, uh, the object ID for it, the item ID. The next one is quantity. This is going to be like if you set a buy order for trit and then you're going to buy like 2500 units then you'd put this in there pretty simple and then we have a unit price here this is a hard value so you'd also just put in the exact amount per unit that you're doing there's actually another way you can do this a little bit better um, it really just kind of depends on how you want to track so you can either put the individual unit price in here or you can go and put the hard value like when you go to set a, a buy order, the total amount you pay to submit that buy order, you can put that in here as well. So for instance, like the formula that this, uh, the E column is using is essentially just um, unit price times uh, quantity, right? That gives us a total amount that we spent. But if you do want to like calculate the broker fee that you paid by submitting that buy order, then what you could do is you could forego actually doing a formula in this field and let's say we spent a million total to put in a buy order you can calculate your unit cost in here by just doing equal and then you can do 1 million divided by the quantity right so then they would give you if you put the correct quantity in here it'll give you the uh, unit price really depends on how you want to do it um and how you want to track it this might be a little bit more accurate so uh we'll just leave it as it is right now we'll put this uh, formula up here so we can see there now obviously you're going to get a lot more than a than a thousand units um, i would say you probably get like 750 
I don't know. I'm not doing the math off the top of my head right now. Yeah, a little bit less than that. But these are all just, you know, you know, uh, random, random numbers that we're dealing with. But anyway, you, you get the idea. And then we're going to move on to the next field. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated because this is actually pulling the market data for the item itself. So this is going to be using an if error statement. So, you know, if you don't actually have anything in the line item, like an ID or a name, it'll just return zero. That way you don't get like an error field here. But essentially, the first function here, and this is just pulled out, like I said, down here, you can investigate this a little bit further. You can see there's a, the same formula, but it's uh, got an equal sign right there. But essentially, the if error is the first function, and that's going to take a value and then the value if error. The value we're giving it is going to be essentially our price right there. And then if it's an error, we're just going to return zero, essentially. The next function inside of the if error is going to be a max. And this function is basically just going to take um, a number value, a bunch of numbers, right? So we're actually feeding an array of numbers because when you do the market orders for the item that we're looking up, it's going to return a bunch of prices. Max means it's going to only pull the top number. So this is actually pulling a buy order. Um, if you were going to pull sell order, then you'd want the max to be a min, right? So inside that max formula, we're going to be doing eveonline.market orders. And then we open parentheses in that. The market orders function is going to take the region ID, the type ID, and then a true or false value, depending on if you wanted to return sell orders or buy orders, and then a location ID. So real quick, we're doing another function inside of here too, just to make things easier for us. But inside the market orders, in order to pull the region ID, what we're going to do is we're going to use the eveonline.station uh, function, open parentheses. And then this number right here is the uh, station ID for G to 44. And then we close that parentheses and do a dot region underscore ID. That'll satisfy the region ID. Any station uh, ID you put in here, it's going to pull the, automatically pull the region ID to satisfy that argument. The next thing we're going to be adding into this uh, market orders function is going to be our type ID, which is referencing our ID field right here. So anytime you have a, a, a value here, it's going to uh, populate for the item. So like I said, this ID field is pulling off the name and then that ID is going to be populating the, um, the market price here. The next value here is going to be the uh, sell buy only Boolean variable. If you put true here, it's going to be giving you buy orders. If you put false here, it's going to give you sell orders. Like I said, if you put false here and you want to pull sell orders, the sell order value, you need to change this max to a min because competitive pricing on sell orders is the minimum value. Competitive pricing on buy orders is the maximum value. The last argument that this function takes is going to be the station or the location ID. We specifically want to pull NG to 44. We don't want to pull region wide prices. So we just take the same um, G to 44 station ID and we plug it here in at the end. Then we just close that parentheses and then do a dot price. And then that closes the parentheses for that, which closes the max function. Like this, you can see these are kind of color coded here. The purple parentheses here is going to close the EVE Online market orders function. The red one is closing the max function. And then the white here is closing the if error. And we're done with that. Good to go. And then the last one we have here is an estimated profits. Um, we got, we're going to have to edit this one because of how we changed the buy order and the quantity or the unit pricing. But essentially what the uh, estimated profit's going to do is it's going to take our total amount of units and compare it against the current price and see if there's any profit, essentially. So right now, this is um, set to um, basically F3. So it's going to take current price times the quantity, put those in parentheses, and then we're going to minus our cost. But since we actually changed up how all this works and everything we're going to be changing this up a little bit. So let's clear that out. All right, now to calculate this based on how we changed kind of cost and unit price calculations here, go ahead and look at this function down here, right here. 
So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to take the current price in parentheses. It's going to take current price times our quantity, close that parentheses. We're going to calculate that first. And then we're going to minus our cost, right? I changed these costs here just so you can see a little bit better representation of this because if we bought one trit and our total cost was 4.08, our unit price be 4.08 and the current market price is 4.08. And so our profit would be uh, zero essentially. Now, if the current price goes up, then you're going to see a profit here in a positive number. If the current price goes down, you're going to see a, a negative number, which means, which indicates no profit at all. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and populate the same things for all of these two items. So you can essentially just start adding items into this field, adding quantities, adding how much you cost and start tracking um, your uh, estimated profits. Now, we will show you some shortcuts on like adding these formulas down the list. So if you just like select the uh, cell that has the Tritanium uh, ID here, roll over this little box here in the bottom right until the cross turns black and just double click. That'll automatically fill everything down to the last entry here. And then pretty much anything with a formula in it, you want to do that. So we're going to do it for unit price as well. And then we're going to do it for current price. And then we're going to do it for estimated profit as well. Now, then we're going to hit F9 to do a recalculation. And this is going to give us a div zero because we have no quantity in here. We can actually fix this error by going up here to this function. And we can do an if error statement. So if error open parentheses, comma, and we'll just put a zero in there and close parentheses. So we actually changed that and we fixed it. We just hit F9 to uh, recalculate that as well. And then you can also just do this by like just dragging it down. So if you roll over that box again to where it's black, you can drag down all the way to the last cell you want to populate. And then we can do the same thing over here. And then you can select both of these since they're both formulas and drag down as well. Go to F9 again. And so you see we have a field error here as well. And you can do, a, so we're basically just going to put another um, if statement um, here as well. Or if error statement, open parentheses, comma. And then we're going to do a zero for that as well. You can also put in like just double quotes and it'll actually do a, a blank. For those if errors, I actually like putting a zero if there's an error, just so I know that that field is automatically calculated. And so I don't have to really do anything um, special or anything. We're going to go and remove this top header here. When you download the reference file, that top header won't be in there because you'll be able to just roll over these and see the formulas that are being used. That will allow us to actually kind of resize this a little bit and uh, make it easy to, to view here. One other thing I will point out is you, whenever you're using ESI, it's best to turn off automatic recalculations. So we're going to go over here and go to file down the very bottom left down in the bottom bottom left is options you can't see it for my camera we're going to formulas and those options we're going to set manual on workbook calculations and hit ok that way we can actually run the calculations and we can sort we can kind of you know mess with the data a little bit without recalculating every single time now as you can see we have a filter on all this stuff as well so we can technically go in here and sort by any one of these fields and the way you turn that on is if you select your whole range and go to data, then you can just turn on filter right there. So we can, let's say we have 100 of these and 500 pyrite, then we can essentially come in here and we can sort by largest to smallest, smallest to largest, and everything in the adjacent cells will uh, follow suit with it. So there you go. Very easy way, very easy way to calculate and kind of track everything that you're doing in here like i said it kind of depends on how you want to calculate your cost if you want to put in the hard value like what you see in the buy window that includes the broker fee you can put that in here and obviously this field is just going to take that total amount and divide it by the number of quantity that you bought but you're going to need to put in the name and the quantity or everything like that a little bit of a bonus information here if you want to actually have all these fields show isk like the current price actually doesn't currently show it Select any field that is going to be ISK, and then you can go to the Home tab, and right under Number, 
we're going to go over here and drop down this menu. We're going to hit more accounting options here. Bring up that. And if we bring up, go up to currency, and then we go here to the symbols drop down, and we can hit I. We can actually go down to ISK here and hit OK. And it'll actually change that field's currency to ISK since that is an actual currency. That's going to be pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. The link for this script or the link for this sheet will be in the description. So you can download this reference, kind of play with it a little bit, experiment with how you like do things. You can also add like your broker uh, fee in here by putting in your uh, your broker percentage, calculating it off the base off the current price, and doing a little bit more automation. But I figured this is a really good way for anybody who's getting into trading. This is a really easy, quick way to start trying to tracking that stuff. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Head over to Patreon for more content and, and spreadsheets and stuff like that. If you want to support the channel, that's a good way to do it. And I'll see you in the next one.